everybody, I'm Mackenzie Halley from the Blue Dragons Guild, and today we're going to be talking about D&D accessories and things that you can add to your game to kind of spice up the experience. First we have here, it's a Young Adventurer's Guide to Monsters and uh, Through Creatures. These are kind of interesting to show, maybe you have young kids, maybe you have people that just like to learn a little bit more about the size, detail about monsters, do this, don't do that when you're playing them as your DM. They go through a wide range of monsters. Uh, this one's the creature one. They also have warriors and weapons. And I believe they've actually came out with a few more since then. I actually picked these up uh, when I was traveling in New York and actually got these from a convention that was going on there. So they're pretty neat to pick up and just uh, cruise through. Uh, inside of this book, the warriors and weapons, you can find different characters like uh, this one has Minsk and Boo talking on there. Um, it's actually pretty funny, pretty neat. It talks about all the legendary rogues from D&D, &D, legendary creatures, how weapons can be ready for combat. It talks about more about swords, ranged weapons. It's just kind of a neat feel. People that are just getting into it wants to see the more visual aspect than what the uh, player's handbooks may have for them. It goes more into survival gear, into the different packs that your character can hold. Uh, so they're pretty neat to pick up. I think they were about maybe $12 each to pick up, depending on where you're getting them, but they're pretty nice. Next we have here the different spell cards, magic items, characters, different, there's a bunch, bunch of different ones of these. This one is the arcane ones. Uh, I should pop one of these open. But uh, you can use these to, you know, basically keep your spells on so you don't have to get them out of different books, don't have to have a lot of them in front of you. If you just want to carry them, like this one would have sleep and it breaks down casting time, range, components, duration, how it works and even when it goes up a level how things change uh, even if you cast a different spell level but they even give you blank ones to even write your own on there or if it's something added later or something you guys you know add in saying hey you can change it this way you can easily be able to do that I really enjoy these because I didn't ever really play spell casters that often uh, because I didn't want to keep everything written down with having poor handwriting. It uh, kind of confused what I could do. Um, but to be able to have that and just pull it out and go, okay, I'm casting such and such. Okay, well, it does this. This is the con save they need to make. I can look on my sheet. I don't have to carry a lot of books. I don't have to carry, you know, all these things. I don't have to really remember it all. I can just go through my spells and go, okay, that's cool. Uh, these ones are magic items. I'm pulling out at random here. This is the Sword of Vengeance, and uh, they actually have little pictures on them. It goes into full detail. They're uncommon. Uh, they require attunement. It can be on any weapon of a sword, in parentheses. And then this goes down even if they're cursed, broken down, so you can be like, okay, this is the item you got. You have it. There it is. Maybe another character takes it, steals it, you lose it. Or even if you're playing DM and you're like, hey, I don't want to go through also looking to see what this creature does fighting, but he also has this magic item. It's just very simple to keep a track there. Uh, this one has the monsters on it. It's actually uh, not even open. So, but this one uh, just picked up. These are, they range anywhere. Some of them are 20. Some of the smaller ones for rangers, since they don't have much, you can pick up for 8 to 10. I think these are about 25. Um, they're always really neat to have. They actually have the symbols of what would be able to use them, whether it's a druid, sorcerer, uh, bard. And you can actually pick up the bard cards, I believe, too. So. They're actually neat to help out and gives you more of that visual aspect to uh, make it simple. Further going along with the spell cards, I picked up one of these right before Christmas. It's a little tiny spell book, like kind of if you ever collected baseball cards or any kind of cards whatsoever. And you just take the spell, slide it right in, and there it is. It's kind of like, okay, playing a sorcerer, wizard, whatever. And you go, okay, these are my spells. And they have enough spots inside of here that you can actually probably go right in the middle because I think it held 54 cards front and back. These are really nice, like a, kind of like, a, it is a leather with a little button clip, but uh, pretty nice. I think this was about 10 bucks. I've seen ones that are way more detailed, a lot bigger where you can just keep four of them on a page, but they've been pretty helpful because I might play with a couple different characters instead of bringing the entire box or trying to keep loose cards while I'm going around. I just put them in the book and, uh, Cast spells like a real wizard. Uh, next up, I have some condition rings, which are pretty neat to use. Uh, they'll have, they're 3D printed, little tiny one, this one I believe, it says fried and I couldn't read backwards. Um, but you can put these in, the minis will actually fit right inside of there based on their base size, obviously. But you can say, oh, this creature has, you know, 
Tasha's hideous laughter cast it on it. So you can remember, oh, when it comes back to their turn, whenever they get hit, however the spell can break or, you know, loses its uh, duration, you can be like, okay, we need to check that. Okay, this one's frightened, um, has invisibility. You get a pretty good amount of these, paralyzed, and they're all color-coded. You can get these as colors, you can get them as a single color, uh, you can mix and match, you can pick which ones you actually like, incapacitated. So these are all pretty cool to have because it gives you remembering and why that character is doing that. Because, I mean, if you're in a fight and the DM's trying to keep track of 15 monsters that you're fighting while keeping track of yours, there are times when we can all say, hey, you know, six turns after that person was supposed to go or into that round, that guy was frightened. Did he make this? No, because we totally forgot because we were trying to keep track of so many other things while doing it. So these have been pretty helpful. Uh... I'm a very visual person, and having more and more things I can see while on the board makes it pretty helpful. Next, speaking of game boards, we have this one here. On one side it has the square layout, the other side hexagon print. Uh, this is actually pretty fun. You can set up set up pieces. Uh, you have 3D printed out. Maybe you have like a board setting there to represent walls. You can use papers, whatever more to give that visual aspect. Put your minis on, use the rings, whatever. To show, hey, you know, I need to move my squares for my movement, get closer, have that real layout feel of a map that you're generating yourself every single time you use it. Um, I really, really enjoy this. I got this from actually one of the friends in the guild, so I don't know where he got it from, but I'm sure you can find them online. I've seen many different ones. I've seen people use mats, papers, just use the table itself. Um, people actually get the TVs and get the maps imprinted onto those to play. Uh, any way you want to do it is perfectly fine. Next up we have here is a dice tower. Um, these are pretty neat to have. You can just drop your dice down through, they'll roll into the tray so they don't roll off the table or go flying somewhere else. Um, I enjoy them. It's uh, you know something a lot of people use just to basically have something simple if you aren't just going to roll it on a table because sometimes you're, you know, with the flat, the surface of it roll off, go off the table, then everybody's going to move, you got 15 to 30 feet to go through, to be like, okay, I finally found my dice, or you just say, forget it, I'll get it by the time the game's over. So these are actually pretty neat and helpful to have. Um, I'll actually show you a dice tray now. Um, it's a different little uh, tool to use to keep them in there. It clips different ways. It has a felt on the inside. Keep your dice in the tray. A lot of people won't use these sometimes just because they'll get caught in the corners. Uh, whereas in the dice tower, it just goes straight down. I don't ever really experience that problem, so I don't know what people are doing. Uh, or you can just button on the other side. We were all given these uh, as gifts from another person in our guild. Same person that gave us the, uh, the map that we showed earlier. But they're pretty interesting, pretty neat to have. I like them. Uh, I use mine pretty often. Every single time we play, and I'll just keep my extra dice in there. The next item I have here is a red dragon dice bag. I know, it's not Blue Dragon, they didn't have one, I searched, pretty sure I can't paint or spray paint this without ruining it, so sorry that I didn't meet that. Uh, these are pretty neat, it's actually a dice bag and opposed to just being a cute stuffed animal. Um, people use different things for dice bags, uh, you know, whether it just be a D&D &D bag, something normal, keep them in a, a grocery bag for anything, or to bring them in the dice tower. I just kind of like this. Picked it up yesterday. Haven't got to use it, so I don't know how the dice fit in there well. Let's find out together. I'm sure they goes great, or they wouldn't even make it. Oh, yeah. Those will fit down in there pretty well. I think you probably fit maybe even two sets in there. Have a big, giant D20. And it just closes up, and you cover the zipper. It actually has a spot where you can hook it onto your bag. Uh, or at least it told me it did. Maybe it was off the zipper because it has a little hole there. I enjoy it. The wing's actually movable, has a bending to it. So, sorry once again, it's not blue. Uh, if they ever make one, I'll be sure to pick it up. Uh, I know they're coming out with a Beholder one. I'm pretty sure it's Anathar, if I'm not mistaken. And a friend from the guild sent me the picture, and he's like, hey, I think you'd like this. So, within 24 hours, I bought it. So, yeah, I liked it. Thanks. The next item I have is a D&D life counter. It actually has the logo there on the side that you can see oh yeah and you can change it down it goes from 0 to 99 so you know when you're knocked out or 99 health you have to pick up two if you want to have more than uh, 99 health so just keep track of it it's easier than writing on the paper 
racing it, riding it back, because then you start to get that gray smudge going all the way through it. It's just easy to do, a couple clicks, keep track of it pretty well. Uh, these are about $10 to pick up that I've noticed, or this one actually came in a DD and d set that came, I think it was Waterdeep. Came with a set of blue dice and this, and it was about $24.99 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, these are really nice to pick up. I have, uh, I think, two of them, and uh, they're actually really useful. These are some of the accessories that we use in our games. In the comments below, please tell us what you enjoyed, what you think we may enjoy, or what you actually use in your games. Hit the like and subscribe to get more D&D content, and as always, keep the dice rolling.